Hello everyone, this is RaySpace and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Recently, YouTube decided to recommend to me an interesting video, and that was this one. Kerbal Space Program Promised Worlds launch trailer. And it is a mod. Uh, from the text, you might think that's for KSP2 because that's the way KSP2 rendered Kerbal Space Program, that font. But it's actually for KSP1. And the Promised Worlds are the ones that KSP2 was supposed to have, but didn't end up having because they stopped development. Uh, so they, this mod is trying to get those worlds into KSP1 is the plan. Now, there is a other mod that's trying to fix KSP2. That's another subject for another time. Uh, I, I'm of two minds about that because if we, you know, I, I would like to play around with it, but I don't want to promote KSP2 because development is not continuing and that's problematic, right? So anyway. Let's focus on this one though. This is trying to get those planets in here, but largely the trailer focuses on the near future and far future parts by Nertea uh, or parts like that. Uh, but, but we see some hints of the landscape there, but it doesn't really focus on featuring the planets. It's <laughs> very focused on the way you get there. So let's see what they have to say for it. Uh, it's time to go back to Kerbal Space Program 1 to claim your promised worlds, go interstellar like they promised. Now, I've always been interested in going interstellar in KSP. Uh, there are many mods that add other star systems, and I was trying to do that with real solar system with the RSS Exoplanets mod, but that's so old that it's very glitchy, and it also sets the star systems at a realistic distance for light years or such. And at that distance, the game is just not able to handle things very well. I, I think it's the distance, but it could be the fact that it's an old mod not using the more recent features of Copernicus, which allows you to add other planets. So maybe if people use the more recent features of Copernicus, and there's also a Copernicus expansion, which this uses, then maybe it's easier to add the other star systems. I wish somebody would update real exoplanets if that's possible. But anyway, want to brave the crater lakes of Gurdama, launch between the molten seas of Rask and Rusk? Our team of veteran KSP-1 modders is working around the globe, though not around the clock, I guess, uh, to bring you those experiences in the KSP-1 and more. So that's what it is. Let's take a look at the GitHub page to see other details. So this is the GitHub page. I'll link, link this in the video description. And uh, it says faithful revival of the star systems that were supposed to be in KSP2. Uh, they did a data dive in those files. And uh, we are only permitted to borrow KSP2 assets if they're not player facing. We have yet to borrow any assets, they say. So each world has been meticulously, craft, meticulously crafted and we'll take a look at the worlds in this video. So it requires Copernicus, Scale Decorator, and Singularity. And it doesn't say anything else like environmental visual enhancements, unfortunately. So I don't know whether it's compatible with environmental visual enhancements, whether we'll have any sort of clouds at all. But it did seem to have some Eve files in the folders. And so I've added Eve into my install with it, and we will see. So we have one star system, the DebDeb -Deb system here. And they plan other star systems, but those are not ready yet. So these are the worlds, and then there's a tune system and other systems, but those aren't in yet. And as far as releases, it's very recent, and we are at 1.0.1. This just restructured the file system, and then it's just a deb deb system right now. So that is what we've got. Let's just go ahead and take a look. Oh, let me show you what I've got installed so that you know. Okay, so this is what my install folder for it looks like right now. The requirements are these can come with the mod. Copernicus uh, expansion comes with the mod. Promise Worlds and Skilled Decorator was... Uh, Promise Worlds this is the mod and Skilled Decorator was a requirement. And then I've added volumetric clouds. So that's this, that, that, and those. Uh, so that's the situation. Now, 
That, and I don't think I need a special ver version of Copernicus for these volumetric clouds, so that's all right. That's Arsis Reborn I'm thinking of. I also have Pekka's Warp Thrust mod, because that will allow us to use thrust during time warp, which will be very helpful again to other star systems without wormholes, which is an option in this mod. Let's take a look at the configuration file to see what options the mod has built in. So up here we have settings, right at the top is those wormholes. Right now I've set it to false, well it comes set to false, and then if you set it to true you have to add the mod that allows for that. Uh, that was one of the requirements if you want to use the wormholes, I don't have that requirement. Uh, distance factor, uh, default Kerbal light years, which is 1 one hundredth of real light years. So if you want to actually have the real distances, like real light years, then you would need to multiply by 100. So you type 100 there. And then if you wanted real planet size, like real solar system, you'd say rescale to 10. Interestingly, it says 10x rescale is forced when RSS is installed. I've already tried this with RSS installed. It doesn't work with RSS installed, as far as I can tell. Um, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's Eve interfering with it. Maybe it's something else interfering with it. It was not a... Um, RSS Reborn thing, that's a complicated business. It was just the RSS Visual Enhancements version. And so with RSS and RSS Visual Enhancements, uh, the system just doesn't show up at all. So yeah, I, I don't know what to think about that. But maybe I did something else wrong. So we'll set that aside for now. That's not the major thing. Uh, I am interested in what scale people would like me to do a playthrough at whether it's full stock, because we don't know much about the system anyway, 2.5x, or maybe even go full scale, even though I'm going to be using stock parts right now. And then file accurate, that's to do with how they uh, found the stuff in KSV2 files. Now, it says these don't work yet, don't go near them, which is unfortunate, because I would really like to actually start on one of the world's in the star system instead of starting on Kerbin, but that is apparently not something that works. I've tried setting that to one of these, it doesn't work. So the, none of this works. So yeah, that's sad though, because that would be very helpful and let us explore from the start. Alas. Anyway, let's take a look at the actual worlds that they offer and see how they are and whether they're enticing enough for us to travel from Kerbin out to them the long way. Now remember you have to start a new save if you're going to do a new star system just in case you have an existing save and you had Kerbin the other star system might not show up otherwise I'm just gonna do a quick sandbox and overwrite what I have there. Now, we, we can't really do full stock. Uh, obviously, we have to get out there and ion engines. Maybe I'll do one try with ion engines and see how long it takes, but uh, I'll probably have to, as they had in their trailer, uh, add Nertea's mods, near future, far future, and all that business to actually get out there. So we'll try that business. I would have liked to do straight stock and start in the Deb Deb system, but no such luck apparently not yet anyway hopefully they figure that out but here's the Kerbal system and deb deb is 255 trillion meters away or 255 billion kilometers there is an option for this protoplanetary disk this effect here that makes it seem like it's a new star system you can turn that off potentially we'll go from the inner planet out and so this char a lot of the time, and it's interesting that they have these custom icons, but a lot of the time when I click on the icon, it goes to the moon instead of the planet. I thought that was fixed in KSP1 at least, not in KSP2 sometimes. But anyway, char is in fact charred. It looks very much charred. So appropriately named. Oven is here. It also doesn't have any moons. It does have a ring though, which is interesting at this distance from the sun. And looks sort of Mars-ish, possibly Venus-ish, it depends. I mean, it doesn't have clouds, so can't tell. Uh, Gurdama, 
sort of the normal default I feel like and it's blue green as it should be got something going on there though that's interesting and then has a very close in moon called donk and that has some lava here it's very close in since it's inside the rings and then it's got a further out moon called goop and goop is a walnut it really is a walnut so that's how Gurdama is. And then out to Lapat. I don't know if I'm pronouncing these properly or anything, but Lapat is like this interesting sort of belt it's got. It does have clouds though, so the clouds are sort of working, I guess. Again, Eve was not cited as a recommendation or requirement or anything, so can't figure that out necessarily. Glumo. Well, I managed to hit the planet even though there's a lot of moons here. Glumo has a moon called Nodge in the middle of its belt. Nodge is just like that. Chestnut? I don't know. And Shana? Sort of another nut. These are not potato roids. Clyde? Clyde is more of a Europa kind of thing, craters and all. And Merble. Merble is sort of a blue thing. I don't know what it's doing in this weird orbit, but it looks more hospitable. And Jute is out here. Jute has its own moon, and they're both sort of asteroid-like. Well, they're round though. So Jute has its own moon. And then Rosh. Well, Rosh is actually a moon of Axod. Axod's the gas giant in the center. Then we have Umod, which is lumpy, not perfectly spherical. And then we have Omasa and Mesma that are in the same orbit but opposite each other. Omasa's not so hospitable looking. Mesma is pretty dry, but it's different, which is interesting because if they're in the same orbit, you would expect that they were made out of the same stuff, but apparently not. Rosh is over here, and it's more like a Callisto kind of deal. Very shiny. And then last but not least, well, maybe at least, I don't know. I haven't seen the sizes of the planets. Uh, Dorao is like this. Vaguely like a Mars surface, dry, deserty. It's sort of also reminiscent of Pluto. And then it's got its own moon called Biz. And Biz is just lumpy like that. All right, so that's the star system, and it has interesting looking planets, and we have to figure out how to get there despite its long distance. Now, with ion engines, it would take an exceedingly long time, but I do have Pekka's Warp Thrust mod in here, and I did add that Warp Thrust mod to the stock ion engine, so we could use Time Warp with the ion engine on, but... Uh... Uh, it's still not super efficient to get across the... This is a sufficiently large distance that it's going to be difficult. Of course, we could always use the wormholes and cut that whole business short and try it like that. But, uh, well, I'll get viewer recommendations on what I should do with this. The questions are whether we should rescale and whether I should use wormholes and what mods I should use. Uh, presumably we're going to go with the the Nertea mods, Near Future, Far Future, that they featured in the video, and I'll just treat that as the recommendation. I do wish that with the mod they did add more recommendations, like if they have environmental visual enhancement uh, compatibility, just recommend it. Uh, that might be helpful too. So anyway, 
I'm looking at this star system as a place to do stuff and have some fun. And that is the notion. If you guys have other systems that you would like to see, you can also tell me. And I'll at least do a compare and contrast sort of deal between this and other star systems. And we'll see how it goes. I had previously been trying a Trappist system uh, sort of playthrough, but I didn't get very far on that. Maybe I should pick that up again, but uh, uh, it makes me feel guilty not doing more of that. But actually, it's more interesting to play around with something somebody else created in any way. So with that, that is my first look at the Promised Worlds mod. And I hope they continue working on it and especially allow us to start in it. And then we could venture to Kerbin. It would be much more interesting to me to start in that star system and then go interstellar to get to Kerbin. Because I've already started in Kerbin and it's boring to me now. But uh, yeah, that, that way around is much more enticing. But there is the DevDev -Deb system and there will be other star systems as well. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.